Uh, notes 3.6 are on rates of change in rational functions. So um, just like we did before, we just need to know how to find average rate of change as well as instantaneous rate of change. So to find the average rate of change, remember we're going to do f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. And then to find the instantaneous rate of change, we can do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, where h is as small as we can get, okay? And I, uh, ideally, we would want h to approach 0. So question number 1 says, given the function f of x equals x over x plus 3, estimate the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at the point where x equals negative 5. So if we want to find the slope of the tangent line, that's basically saying find the instantaneous rate of change. So to find it, just like we said before, we're going to do our delta f of x over delta x, and we're going to do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, and let's make h small, so we'll make h uh, 0 0.01, okay? So this ends up being f of negative 5 plus 0 0.01 minus f of negative 5 all over 0 0.01. So I end up getting f of negative 4.99 minus f of negative 5 over 0 0.01. So then when I plug this in right here, I get um, negative 4.99. I'm going to store it in as my x value right here. And I'm going to plug it into my function. And my function right here is x over x plus 3. So I'm going to type in x over, and then in brackets, I have to write x plus 3 press enter, and I end up getting 2.50754. So I can say that this is equal to 2.50754 minus, and then when I do the same thing with um, just negative 5, and I store that in as x, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to copy and paste, I get 5 over 2, which is 2.5, so I get um, minus 2.5 over 0 0.01, so this ends up becoming 0.5, sorry, uh, 0 0.0754 over 0 0.00754 um, over 0 0.01, which is approximately going to give me 0 0.754. So that's going to be the slope of my tangent line. So we can say, therefore, the slope of the tangent line when x is negative 5 is approximately 0.754, okay? So now it says, well, why can't there be a tangent line uh, where x equals negative 3 right here? So at, at x equals negative 3, we have an asymptote. And if I have an asymptote at x equals negative 3, then I won't have a tangent line because uh, it's going to be approaching infinity in one of my directions, either positive infinity or negative infinity, so it won't work for me. So I can't have a tangent line when x equals negative 3 because I have an asymptote. So if there's an asymptote, uh, there can't be a tangent line. And another reason why so we'll just write this down really quickly. Another reason why is because the tangent line tells us our instantaneous rate of change. But at negative 3, it's trying to approach infinity or negative infinity. So we can't have an instantaneous rate of change as a graph is trying to approach um, infinity. So there is no IROC as a graph is trying to approach positive or negative infinity, okay? All right, in number two, uh, we've got a word problem, and it tells us that the snowshoe hare population in a newly created conservation area can be predicted over time by this model, P of t is equal to 50 plus 2,500 t squared over 25 plus t squared, where p represents the population size and t is the time in years since the opening of the conservation, this should say area. Determine when the hair population will increase most rapidly 
and then estimate the instantaneous rate of change in population at this time. So if I want to determine when the hair population will increase most rapidly, I need to figure out where my, um, my eye rock is going to be its largest. Okay, and I'm going to solve this graphically. I'm going to take a look at a graph of this and see how I can figure this out using a graph. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Desmos and I'm going to graph out my function. So here I'm going to type in uh, P of T is equal to, um, and then we have 50 plus, and then we've got a fraction of 2500 T squared over 25 plus t squared, okay? So when I graph this out right here, nothing's happening, I can't really see anything. And the reason why is because I don't have a good uh, 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 view of my graph. I don't have good uh, numbers picked for my graph. So what I'm going to do is I wanna play around with this a little bit and figure out, well, what is my graph approaching? Does my graph have some type of an asymptote? And it does. So right here, this 50 right here, We'll talk about that in a minute. But over here, in this numerator and in this denominator right here, we've got P of T is equal to 50 plus this 2500 T squared over 25 plus T squared. I know I want to figure out what's the end behavior. What's it approaching um, when, when we've got positive or negative infinity? And specifically for this problem, I only want positive infinity because time is years and I don't want to worry about um, negative values of t. So when t is getting really large right here, if I square it, it's going to get even larger. And if I multiply it by 2,500, it's going to get even larger than that. And over here, this 25 really is negligible. So is this 50. Okay, because this doesn't really matter when I'm talking about large values of t right here. So essentially, it's going to behave if for large values of t, it's essentially going to behave like 2500 t squared over t squared. Well, these t squareds cancel out, so it's going to approach 2500. So that means that my population will stabilize. at 2,500 hairs, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, figure out how to change my graph so that this works out a little bit better for me. So here, I want my population to show, let's go from negative 100 so I can see my, x, my x-axis, and let's go up to a little bit past our 2,500 that we have here. So let's go to 3,000. And then um, I can see things a little bit better this way. I can see that it's leveling off, and it's also going to approach 2,500 on the other side. However, we don't care about negative x values, so we're going to um, start with 0. Actually, let's start with negative 1 so we can kind of see the y-axis, and we want to approach 2,500, and right now I don't see it approaching 2,500, so I think going out to 10 is not enough. So let's just try to go out to 100, see what happens. Definitely a much better view. I can see things a lot better, see what's happening with my graph right here. So it's clear that my graph is increasing right here, and then it's going to slow down, and then it's going to start to level off. So now, right here, I'm trying to find where is my instantaneous rate of change going to be the largest. So essentially, where is my uh, slope of my tangent line going to be the steepest? That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to show you how to find that in your graph right now. So um, essentially, all I want to do is I want to look and see where my the slope of my tangent line is going to be the steepest, right? So if I look right here, it's very clear at zero, the slope of my tangent line is zero because it's not really moving anywhere, right? And as I get closer and closer to um, my tangent line, uh, or sorry, my asymptote right here, it's very clear that my slope is getting less steep. And I'll draw it in for you so you guys can see this a little bit better. So as I'm looking right here, it's clear over here, my, the slope of my tangent line is zero, like we said. And then over here, the slope of my tangent line is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And then all of a sudden, it starts to level off. If you notice, the slope of my tangent line is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we get closer and closer to my asymptote, the slope of my tangent line is approaching 
zero. Okay, so I'm looking, I think that my steepest tangent line is going to be somewhere within this area right here. So I think in this, this area right here, I've got the steepest tangent line. Well, it starts at about 1.5 and it ends at about, uh, sorry, it starts at about uh, 2 and it ends at about uh, 8. So it's clear that it's going to be somewhere within that area. So I'm going to show you um, at this point in time your guess is just as good as you can do. You're just going to approximate it and see which one is going to be the best way to do it. But I'm going to actually draw in tangent lines so we can get a more accurate answer. In order for me to be able to graph out um, the tangent line, I need to use calculus. So don't worry about the formulas that we have on the side right here. It's not a big deal. Um, I just want you guys to notice the slope of my tangent line that I have here and we're going to look for the one that's going to be the steepest slope. Um, so I want you to understand the concept behind this. I understand that you will not be able to do this without calc, but I want you to understand the process behind how to do this. So if I were to um, go ahead and adjust my uh, tangent line, this value is the x value that I'm trying to find where my tangent line is, okay? So if I keep increasing my tangent line, as you can tell as I get closer and closer um, to the larger values of x here, my tangent line is getting closer and closer to zero. So my instantaneous rate of change is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, I'm looking for the largest instantaneous rate of change. So I'm going to go back to my beginning uh, A values right here. And I'm going to try to find where my tangent line is steepest. So here it's very clear that my tangent line is definitely steeper than it was when it was over here. So I'm going to just keep going. And it's clear right here that my tangent line is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Now right here, my tangent line is getting less steep and less steep. So it's, again, like we said, it's going to be somewhere between 2 and 8. So I'm going to have my step be between, sorry, my um, A value be between 2 and 8, and I'm going to just keep going with it until I find where my tangent line is going to be the steepest. And as you can tell right here, it's starting to get less steep, so I should go farther to the left, and right here, Still getting steeper, slightly steeper, starting to slow down though, so I think I'm getting close to the steepness that I'm looking for. Um, and then right here, it's starting to get less steep again. So it's going to be somewhere around here. And I think 2.9 would probably be a good, accurate representation of my steepest slope. Okay, so the question is asking me um, right here, uh, determine when the hair population will increase most rapidly. So the hair, the hair population will increase most rapidly when T, so we'll say it's most rapid when T is about 2.9 and uh, T is measured in years, so we'll say it's about 2.9 years, okay? And then, once I figure that out, the rest we can do easily. The rest, the next part says, estimate the instantaneous rate of change in population at this time. So in order to be able to do that, all I have to do is just what we did before and what we've always been doing for, for instantaneous rate of change. So I can say that the IROC is equal to P of, let's let H equal 0 0.001 this time. We'll make it even smaller. So we'll do uh, P of 2.901 minus P of 2.9, and then I'm going to divide that by um, 0 0.001. So I get approximately, so I'm going to take 2.901, and I'm going to store it in for T, and then I'm going to type in the, uh, the expression that I have in my function right here. So I'm going to type in 50 plus 2,500 t squared over 25 plus t squared. So 50 plus, on these calculators to get your fractions, you do control divides, and then you'll have your fraction right here. So I'm going to say 2,500 t squared over, and I believe it was what, 25 plus t squared, so we'll say 25 plus t squared right here, and I get 679.627, okay? So we'll go ahead and write that down. And then I'm going to do the same thing for 2.9. So I'll take 2.9, store that in as t, 
Okay, go up, copy, paste, press enter, and I get 679.303. And that's going to be all over 0 0.001. So now I need to subtract these two values. And then uh, once I subtract them and divide, I will get my instantaneous rate of change. I want you to do that, please, on your own, and then come back to me to see how you did. Okay. So you should end up getting about 3.24 over 0 0.001, which is 324 hairs per year. So that's my answer to the question. Um, so let's just have a final statement, and then we'll be okay for this question. So it says, determine when the hair population will increase most rapidly. So it will increase most rapidly at 2.9 years, and the instantaneous rate of change in the population at this time is going to be about 324 hairs per year. So we can say, therefore... Uh, the hair population uh, increases most rapidly when t equals 2.9 years at a rate of about 324 hairs per year. Um, I'm gonna, if you need to copy this down, if it's too fast for you, please make sure to press pause and then make sure you get it down. Have a good day.